There we go. Perpendicular cut. No problem. Not shaving off. Can't do that if we're very dull. Hi, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and I thought I'd do a video taking a cheap dollar store axe and turning it into something that, in terms of function, resembles a high-end axe. And uh, I know a lot of people might not think that's possible. This is a $4 dollar store axe. And I know a lot of people will say, well, the quality of steel just isn't there. You can't have it function like a, an exquisite high-end axe. Uh, because it's cheap steel. Um, I think that's the first mistake a lot of people think because they spend all their time watching YouTube videos with these so-called axe experts. They're really axe salesmen, axe salespeople. Um, I mean, the, the quality of the metal matters. Quality matter, metal is better than cheap metal. But remember, you're cutting through wood. <laughs> and, you know, the quality of the metal really means how often it has to be sharpened. But you can take relatively cheap metal, like I'm sure this axe is made of. I don't know what brand this is. All it says on it is 600. <laughs> I'm guessing it's 600 uh, grams. <laughs> you know, it's like a pound and a quarter or something like that. Um, so, you know, this is cheap. One of the good things about cheap metal is that it's much easier to sharpen. Um, and how often are you going to need to sharpen it anyway? Uh, you put a good edge on something like this, you, you might only have to re redefine the edge every once every couple years. So I bought this about a year ago and uh, I just used it around the yard. I bought it for making this very video. I got lots of axes and I got lots of good axes. So actually all my axes are, I call them good axes, but they're axes that cost like 20, 30 bucks. I don't have any axes worth more than that. And I use axes a lot and do a lot with them. Um, anyway, I don't know if you can see, you can probably maybe even hear that. I don't know if you can hear that, but basically it's already come loose. Right? <laughs> so, you know, the, these plastic handles are useless or whatever. This is fiberglass or whatever. They don't last. They don't hold up. Um, so, step one is to get it off the handle. Step two is to uh, make sure the edge is really nice, sort of redefine the edge. A lot of cheap axes, what's, what's crappy about them is how the edges put on, and you can just reprofile the edge and have them work really, really well. When you buy these really expensive axes, Yes, you're paying for craftsmanship and wood and good good quality steel and all that sort of stuff. But when the axe is in your hand and you're actually using it, I'll tell you right now, what makes the difference is the length of the handle and the uh, how well the edge has been put on the axe. I've, I've been working on this one a bit. This one. I wasn't going to make a video about this one. I decided to at the last minute. I've been working on the edge a little bit uh, already this morning, so it's not quite there yet, but almost there. But I've got a pretty good edge on this. It might take 30 minutes to an hour to reprofile the edge of an axe, but that'll save you a lot of money <laughs> because once you put a good edge on it, uh, the thing functions extremely well. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, let's do the next thing here and get the pop this handle off. There we go. All right, all right, we got it, and we know which way is up, <laughs> right? All right, so now the next thing to do is to uh, perfect the blade because it's just so much easier to sharpen and work on a blade when it's not, you know, seated on an axe. Um, so I can see, I don't know how well you can see this here. I'm gonna bring it closer to the light, but there's an imperfection right here. I don't know how obvious that is. So I've been working on it, right? I don't know if it got driven into the ground and took a rock. There's a little sort of dent there, so I gotta work all that metal to get that off. And it's not a big deal, you just take a file and and get to work until you can't really see that imperfection anymore. The whole thing should look like it. See how the rest of that looks? Then you see this little dent. And, and if you look at it this way, you can sort of see where it affects the profile of the blade. Right, looks okay on the other side, but on this side, you can see that little imperfection. So, if you're just using this for cutting wood, 
it's going to wear there quicker than everywhere else. So you have to fix that. Okay, and it only takes a couple minutes with a file, with a hand file. You can use machines for that too, but, you know, I got this axe pretty much the way I want it. Um, the trick with a lot of axes profile the blades like this, and that's good because it makes it hard to break, but it's not good for cutting wood. And, and for little hatchets like this, you don't want them blunt like this. You kind of want them sharp like this. You don't want to have them that have the profile of a knife, but you want them kind of, you know, sharp so you can do finer tasks, right? You want them sharp. Uh, so I'm just going to put this in the vise here and, and work on it with the, with the file. Alright, I think that's, you look at that in the light, I can still see a nick there, oh my goodness. Yeah, I can still see a tiny nick there. So, that's problematic, we gotta take that out. It's okay on this side. On this side it's okay. So over here, tiny little nick there. All right, now I can't see that nick anymore. So to me, that's, that's close enough to perfection. Now I gotta take some fine sandpaper and sort of smooth that out a bit. All right, so I got some 400 grit sandpaper here. Just gonna take that to the metal, 400 grit. Make sure to wet it first. Now I got some 600. I think that's all you need is 600. That's fine. And a lot of these guys on YouTube go crazy with this stuff. And it doesn't make much of a difference. And I, I honestly don't think they're using their axes that much. You sharpen an axe to within 600 grit. <laughs> you only have to do that once every couple years, even if you're using it a lot. Alright, so that's, for me, that is perfectly fine, perfectly fine edge. Take a hone to it, like that, very lightly. You want to strop it, you can. All right, that, that's a crazy sharp edge. Okay, hang on. Wet my arm here. All right, I'm shaved. I don't know if you can see that. All right, shaved. <laughs> Okay, that's sharp enough for an axe, for crying out loud. So, one reason a lot of hatchets that you might buy are crap, aside from the edge being no good, is that the handle's just too short. Look at this hatchet handle, look how short it is. And this is the length of most hatchets. Okay, you wanna have it about <laughs> six inches longer than this. Okay, that way you can use it two-handed. That way, it just, it's safer for cutting down trees. There's, there's just, it's a safety thing, it's a control thing. You know, if you need control, you can actually, you can choke up on it and hold it here. You can always hold it short, right? But for power, you want to have more length, right? You get more more swing if you're hanging the, onto the bottom of it, right? You ever look at carpenters, uh, finished carpenters that just drive small nails, use a handle like this. But guys that are putting up studs, you know, driving three and a half inch, four inch nails through uh, two by six, they have what's called a framing hammer, longer handle, right? So the length of this, what are we at here? I'd say something like 16 inches, right? So that's basically it's 19 inches overall, but we're not going to be using the full length of the top here. So we'll probably have an 18 inch length, right? So that's, that's a good length, right? For a hatchet, right? Not something short like this, 12 inches, just useless. All right. So step one is to just see how, uh, 
how well this fits. It doesn't seem to, you can see here, I don't know how obvious this is, but it doesn't fit at all, okay? So when you're trying to fit a, an axe handle to an axe head, and the, the axe head from front to back is shorter than the handle from front to back, you gotta remove material from the handle, but do not remove material from the front. Remove material from the back of the handle, always, okay? Because you've got this nice taper that you're going to need, and it's just a strength thing. It needs to be straight here. You can't be stepping it in at this point. It needs to be straight the whole way. All right, so you take the material off the back, not off the front. All right, to my mind, i got to take about an eighth, uh, eighth to three sixteenths of an inch off of here, so let me work on that. Just a little commentary on this uh, process here. I'm using a wood rasp. I think this is the only tool you need to do the whole thing. Uh, you just take off a bit and uh, check it against the axe head and then take off some more and just keep going. Again, always off the back. Uh, here I am using a block plane. That works too. You can take off. The uh, block plane's a bit more aggressive than the wood rasp. So, uh, you know, I find it's easier to follow the contour with the wood rasp. I just use this block plane because I, I wanted to try it out. Uh, sometimes I switch back and forth. Uh, but right around here, I think I switched back to the wood rasp because I just like it. I feel more confident with it. All right, so from banging this on the floor, I got it to about there. It's not actually straight right now. need to work on that a little bit. But I'm just going to pop this, uh, pop this off. That's where we are roughly. I can take a knife and work that a little bit. Just some fine tuning. Just using the markings and the paint from the inside of the axe head to, get, to guide that. The next thing is that I'm not hanging this with metal wedges. I just have wooden wedges. So when you use wooden wedges, you have to sort of do this a little bit differently. I'll show you what I mean. When you put wedges in an axe head, remember the top of the axe head is wider than the bottom. So basically you're making the top of the handle wider than the bottom so that it won't come off. And normally you put one wedge the length of this, and then you put a metal wedge, metal wedge in perpendicular to push the to push the handle from front to back. Right, so you got one wedge pushing out this way, and then a the metal wedge pushing it out that way. I don't have a metal wedge, so I have to put a wooden wedge in the middle, which means I have to cut a kerf. Right, you can see there's a slot cut the length of this. This is an axe handle I bought. Right, you can buy these for. Five, you know, if you see these on sale anywhere, under ten dollars, buy a bunch of them, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, so I just have to put another slot the other way, and not in the middle, a little bit closer to the back, basically where it's at its widest. That's where you want to put that. I'm just going to use a silky saw for that. Perfectly fine. Well, that's a good spot. Let me shorten this up somewhat. Right about there. Just going by eye. Whoops. There we go. You want to cut this to the depth of the other one. You don't want to go cheap on cutting this. You don't want it to actually crack, right? You can cut it a bit longer than you think you should. And your instinct is that you're weakening this thing, but you're really not because you're going to glue it all together. It's all going to be fine, all right? All right, so now I've cut that, cut that both ways. And I'm ready to mount my head. I think I pound this down, but you can see it's not perfectly straight. It's a bit, it's angled this way a bit, right? So I'm just going to tap on the back of this. The piece of wood. And some purists might say I'm doing something wrong, but uh, I don't care. This works. 
perfectly fine. more taps there. A couple more floor taps. A couple straightening taps. I'm happy with that. That looks good to me. All right, now it's time to start in with the wedges. All right, we start with the front to back wedge first. All right. Put a little glue on there. All right. This is a uh, point of no return. All right, that's good. All right, got plenty of glue rubbed into both pieces. in their positions and we start to work. They will not go in any more than that. They are in. <laughs> Alright, and it seemed like you can see from looking at this. Oh, jeez. The, the back piece wanted to go in. Right, the back piece went in further than the front piece. That's fine. I mean, that's what you're doing with the wedge. You're, you're filling up the space inside the axe head with the wedge. So it's fine if one goes more than the other. Right? Doesn't mean anything. Just means that needed to go more. <laughs> okay? Now the final thing to do is to cut this off. And don't cut it off flush. Leave a little bit there. Right? So, you know, that little bit hanging off the end, a little bit of wood hanging off the end, will gather water, humidity, and so on, and keep the end wider than the axe head, especially with no metal wedges in there. Alright, so it's no big deal to, to take that off. Just stick her in the vise. Oh, three sixteenths hanging off. Okay. Uh, once you got that off, you could just take a little sandpaper, smooth that out a bit. And there, there we go. I don't know how well you can see that. All the the one, two, three, three wedge technique. In a bigger X, you use um, uh, more wedges. <laughs> You'd use two going this way and uh, three going the other way. Use five wedges with a bigger axe if you're doing it with this wooden wedge technique. But you see how neatly those are all fit in there, right? And of course, the top of the axe is wider than the bottom. So there shouldn't be any slippage, right? This should hold really well. And this is a good handle, right? Because it's not varnished or anything like that. I'm gonna put a little linseed oil on that. That's all I'm gonna do to it, right? Put this and smooth, you know, clean this up a little bit here. But that's all I need to do from this point. So I mean, I had to do a considerable amount of work to the handle to get it to accept this head. But now that it's on there, that ain't. I mean, that's that's tight all the way around. There's no daylight there, right? Right, I removed the material off the back of the handle, not the front. Right, I just took it down in little, you know, little bits and little dribs and drabs, uh, using various techniques, mainly using the rasp. But I did use a plane. But I, I could have done the whole thing with the rasp. Really depends on your proclivities. This is the main tool you need: is the rasp, right? <laughs> you know, that, that's that's the most helpful tool, right? But now I got a well hung uh, uh, axe. So let's uh, let's take it outside and see how she works. I just noticed the handle is still on the uh, the price tag is still on this handle, four bucks. So we got a four dollar axe head, basically axe and handle, four dollars at the dollar store. 
and four bucks, eight dollars, and I made the wedges myself. That probably took about 15 minutes, right? When you when you don't need a long wedge, when you have these short wedges, they're way easier to make, <laughs> right? I made them out of a good hardwood, right? You want to use hardwood wedges, ideally of the same material as the axe head, but not absolutely necessary. Just nice, to, nice to have, right? Uh, anyway, let's take down this tree here. Which I've been meaning to take down anyway. Let's see how quickly we can go through it with this cheap four dollar dollar store axe. Bit awkward there because uh, just uh, it's an awkward spot to operate an axe at, but uh, not bad. Let's let's check out the limbing here. Right. Flies through. Get the one over here. Whoops! Flies over like a life save, like a lightsaber. This is a gauge, another way of gauging sharpness. All right, just a straight perpendicular cut. No problem. All right, just as an example of sharpness. See that shaving off? can't do that if a blade's dull, right? You just can't. You can't do that kind of fine work. And with a hatchet, you need it to be able to do stuff like that, right? To save your knife from having to do it. And for whatever reason, right? You need it to sharpen something or whatever, right? You're carving a canoe paddle or doing whatever fine work you want to do with a hatchet, right? The hatchet should be able to fell a tree, but also do something reasonably fine like that. Do a reasonably good job of it and work better than a knife, right? Because it's heavier, right? Here's a typical kind of dead tree you'd use for uh, some sort of ridge pole out of truck or a, you know, out of shelter or something like that. Right, just so you can get a sense of, right, right, through that pretty quickly, right, cheap axe, works fine. <laughs> anyway, there you have it, a cheap $4 axe turned into something a little bit more useful. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but now I've got this axe for as long as it holds up, which if I'm lucky will be the rest of my life. Just needs a little bit of linseed oil, let it sit for a week like that, and she'll be ready to rock. So <laughs> that's one way to take a cheap axe and put a decent handle onto it, put a proper edge onto it, right? And then you've got a better axe, right? Sure, you can just spend like $80 or $90 or $50 uh, on the axe, you know, right out of the box. But with stuff like this, you learn all these little skills you know, and uh, and you save a few bucks, and you know, for a hatchet, for hatchet work, um, this is all you really need to do to take a cheap hatchet and really improve its its utility, its usefulness, and that sort of thing. So, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.